having left the supper room where he had just instituted the Blessed Eucharist. Jesus went out with the disciples, crossed the brook Cedron, and as was his wont, ascended the Mount of Olives. They entered a garden called Gethsemane. Jesus said to the disciples, Sit you here while I go yonder and pray. And taking with him Peter, James, and John, he began to be fearful and sad. Then he said to the three apostles, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Stay you here and watch with me. He then went on a little further, and falling flat on the ground, prayed, My father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Then he returned to his disciples and, finding them asleep from sorrow, said to Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst thou not watch one hour with me? Watch ye and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my cry for help. Please listen and answer me, for I am overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shout at me, making loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. My heart pounds in my chest. The terror of death assaults me. Fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove. Then I would fly away and rest. I would fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. How quickly I would escape far from this wild storm of hatred. Confuse them, Lord, and frustrate their plans. For I see violence and conflict in the city. Its walls are patrolled day and night against invaders. But the real danger is the wickedness within the city. Everything is falling apart. Threats and cheating are rampant in the streets. It is not an enemy who taunts me. I could bear that. It is not my foes who so arrogantly insult me. I could have hidden from them. Instead, it is you, my equal, my companion and close friend. What good fellowship we once enjoyed as we walked together to the house of God. Let death stalk my enemies. Let the graves swallow them alive, for evil makes its home within them. But I will call on God, and the Lord will rescue me. Morning, noon, and night I cry out in my distress, and the Lord hears my voice. He ransoms me and keeps me safe from the battle waged against me, though many still oppose me. God, who has ruled forever, will hear me and humble them. For my enemies refuse to change their ways. They do not fear God. As for my companion, he betrayed his friends. He broke his promises. His words are as smooth as butter, but in his heart is war. His words are as soothing as lotion, but underneath are daggers. Give your burdens to the Lord, and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. But you, O oh God, will send the wicked down to the pit of destruction. Murderers and liars will die young, but I am trusting you to save me. Jesus in Gethsemane teaches us how to pray. He goes to a secluded spot to pour out his soul to the Father, thus admonishing us that to pray well we must banish from our minds the distractions and vanities of this world. He asks the disciples to watch with him, 
from which we learn how acceptable it is to God to ask others to join their intercessions with ours and to pray for our intentions. He falls flat upon his face, teaching us by his example the humility of spirit and reverential demeanor of body that should accompany prayer. He prays with earnestness and fervor. His request is made with entire submission to the divine will. He prays not once only, but renews his petition with perseverance. Let us pray. O Divine Master, who in the garden didst vouchsafe to instruct us how to pray, grant that we may ever pray in thy name, and following thy instruction and example, may deserve to be heard by the Father. We unite our prayer with that which thou didst offer when entering upon thy sacred passion. We ask that thou pardon the sorrow we have caused thee by defects and negligences in prayer, that thou bless our good resolutions for the future. We commend to thee also, O Lord, all those who have asked us to pray for them, those whose special intentions we have at heart, and all for whom we are accustomed or bound to pray. Supply all their necessities, comfort and support them in all their trials and afflictions, deliver them from all temptations, make them in this world truly to know, love and serve thee, and to enjoy thee hereafter in heaven. By thy holy prayer we implore mercy for all those who through ignorance, frailty or malice outrage thee. Do thou, our mediator with the Father, intercede for all who do not acknowledge thee. May the world be delivered from the power of Satan, and all nations believe in thee and adore thee, and be united to thy holy church. Amen. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, Why, what evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot, like a root in dry ground. There was nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised, and we did not care. Yet it was our weaknesses he carried, it was our sorrows that weighed him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God, a punishment for his own sins. But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so we could be whole, he was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away, we have left God's paths to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, 
and as a sheep is silent before the shearers, he did not open his mouth. Unjustly condemned, he was led away. No one cared that he died without descendants, that his life was cut short in midstream. But he was struck down for the rebellion of my people. He had done no wrong, and he had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal. He was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life, and the Lord's good plan will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous, for he will bear all their sins. I will give him the honors of a victorious soldier, because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among the rebels, he bore the sins of many, and interceded for rebels. Jesus, the Lamb of God, endures a most terrible scourging in preparation for his crucifixion. Having begun his torment at the garden, his most sacred body now feels the lacerations which bring forth upon the earth his most precious blood. Let us contemplate the words of the crowd, his blood be upon us and on our children. Some of us may wonder why the Father demanded such gruesome punishment upon his only begotten Son. But it is we who have demanded it by our sins, by our cruelty in our daily lives, in our demands for justice instead of mercy, we convict the Lord to a most gruesome punishment. It is by our Lord's love for us that his passion is transformed into mercy for us. We have demanded cruelty and the blood of condemnation to be upon us and on our children. And yet he has given us mercy and his most precious blood, the blood of the new covenant, the blood of of reconciliation. Let us pray. Most merciful Jesus, you were wounded so we could be healed. By your blood we are washed clean. Grant us a heart like yours, a meek and humble heart, a pure and patient heart a merciful and peaceful heart, that we may love like you and bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, and endure all things unto eternal life. Amen. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand, and knelt before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of your anger and wrath. For you have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I'm withering away like grass. But you, O Lord, will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. 
You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem, and now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promised to help. For your people love every stone in her wall, and cherish even the dust in her streets. Then the nations will tremble before the Lord. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. For the Lord will rebuild Jerusalem, he will appear in his glory. He will listen to the prayers of the destitute, he will not reject their pleas. Let this be recorded for future generations, so that a people not yet born will praise the Lord. Tell them the Lord looked down from his heavenly sanctuary. He looked down to earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners, to release those condemned to die. And so the Lord's fame will be celebrated in Zion, his praises in Jerusalem. When multitudes gather together and kingdoms come to worship the Lord. The King of Kings is subjected to mockery and humiliation. They salute him in derision as King of the Jews, and rightly he is a king. From the moment of his birth, deserving a royal bed, he humbled himself into a meager manger, and when he deserved a crown of gold, he humbled himself into a crown of thorns. The entire incarnation was God stooping down to our level. His humiliation was an identification with our humiliation. He became poor, hungry, sick, and a prisoner to teach us that the greatest in God's kingdom is the lowliest servant, the one who loves his enemies forgives injuries, and seeks peace. He wore the crown of thorns that we may wear the crown of glory. Let us pray. King Jesus, you have shown us how to live in your kingdom. Grant that we may respond to evil with love, forgiveness, and peace. Help us thus to proclaim daily through our lives the good news that you, O God, reign now and forever. Amen. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out to you by day, I come to you at night. Now hear my prayer, listen to my cry, for my life is full of troubles, and death draws near. I am as good as dead, like a strong man with no strength left. They have left me among the dead, and I lie like a corpse in a grave. I am forgotten, cut off from your care. You have thrown me into the lowest pit, into the darkest steps. Your anger weighs me down. With wave after wave you have engulfed me. You have driven my friends away by making me repulsive to them. I am in a trap with no way of escape. My eyes are blinded by my tears. Each day I beg for your help, O Lord. I lift my hands to you for mercy. Are your wonderful deeds of any use to the dead? Do the dead rise up and praise you? Can those in the grave declare your unfailing love? 
Can they proclaim your faithfulness in the place of destruction? Can the darkness speak of your wonderful deeds? Can anyone in the land of forgetfulness talk about your righteousness? O Lord, I cry out to you. I will keep on pleading day by day. O Lord, why do you reject me? Why do you turn your face from me? I have been sick and close to death since my youth. I stand helpless and desperate before your terrors. Your fierce anger has overwhelmed me. Your terrors have paralyzed me. They swirl around me like floodwaters all day long. They have engulfed me completely. You have taken away my companions and loved ones. Darkness is my closest friend. In Carrying the Cross Jesus carries the oppression of sin and suffering, weighing down our souls and our bodies. Our Lord, exhausted from the sham trial and weakened from loss of blood, now makes his way to Calvary. He falls under the weight of the cross. Simon of Cyrene, coming in from the countryside, is made to help him. In helping Jesus carry the cross, Simon reminds us that we ought to help Jesus carry the cross. The sure sign of a Christian is one who carries their cross daily and follows Jesus. If we unite our sufferings and sorrows, and even our death to Christ, he shall transform them into blessed joy and life everlasting. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried your cross to lift the oppressive weight of sin and suffering off our shoulders. Help us, we pray, to see the oppressive yoke still upon so many shoulders in the world, and grant us the strength to alleviate such suffering, so that, like Simon, we may carry the cross, following you to do the Father's will. Amen. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. They offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him one on the right and one on the left, and those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour, and about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders, hearing it, said, This man is calling Elijah, and one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe, and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night I lift my voice, 
but I find no relief. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. Our ancestors trusted in you, and you rescued them. They cried out to you and were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. But I am a worm and not a man. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads, saying, Is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. Yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and led me to trust you at my mother's breast. I was thrust into your arms at my birth. You have been my God from the moment I was born. Do not stay so far from me, for trouble is near and no one else can help me. My enemies surround me like a herd of bulls. Fierce bulls of Bashan have hemmed me in. Like lions they open their jaws against me, roaring and tearing into their prey. My life is poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, melting within me. My strength has dried up like sun-baked clay. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You have laid me in the dust and left me for dead. My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. O oh Lord, do not stay far away. You are my strength. Come quickly to my aid. Save me from the sword. Spare my precious life from these dogs. Snatch me from the lion's jaw and from the horns of these wild oxen. I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. Praise the Lord, all you who fear him. Honor him, all you descendants of Jacob. Show him reverence, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not ignored or belittled the suffering of the needy. He has not turned his back on them, but has listened to their cries for help. I will praise you in the great assembly. I will fulfill my vows in the presence of those who worship you. The poor will eat and be satisfied. All who seek the Lord will praise him. Their hearts will rejoice with everlasting joy. The whole earth will acknowledge the Lord and return to him. All the families of the nations will bow down before him. For royal power belongs to the Lord. He rules all the nations. Let the rich of the earth feast and worship. Bow before him all who are mortal, all whose lives will end as dust. Our children will also serve him. Future generations will hear about the wonders of the Lord. His righteous acts will be told to those not yet born. They will hear about everything he has done. In Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, the sign above Jesus proclaimed his kingship before the entire world. The King of the Jews, the promised Son of David, rejected by so many because of a mistaken idea of what a Messiah was supposed to be, a perverted vision of a human king destined to overthrow and rule with the power of the sword. But now the title, publicly displayed above Jesus, showed the truth of the crucified Messiah. Indeed, he was the king of the world, now lifted up. In sinking to the depths, he rose to the heights and radically fulfilled the commandment of love, completing the offering of himself, revealing the true God, the God who is love. Now we know who God is. Now we know what true kingship is. With the words of Psalm 22, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
Jesus takes upon himself the whole suffering people of Israel and all of suffering humanity, and he makes God present in the very place where he seems most absent. The cross of Jesus is a cosmic event. The world is darkened when the Son of God is given up to death. The earth trembles, and on the cross the church is born. From the cross he triumphs and makes all things new. Let us pray. Look down upon us, good and gentle Jesus, while before your face we humbly pray, and with burning soul ask you to fix deep in our hearts lively sentiments of faith, hope, and love, true contrition for our sins, and a firm purpose of renewal. With great sorrow and tender pity, we contemplate your five wounds and call to mind the words of David your prophet. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. Amen.